Sean Tabbitt here. Many of you know me from my podcast, The Sean Tabbitt Show, but I am excited uh, to announce a brand new show. Uh, behind the scenes, I have been chatting with my good friend, Randy Kay, and we are launching the Two Christian Dudes podcast. And in this episode zero trailer episode, uh, we want to tell you about some of the things that we have planned, some of the exciting guests that we have in store uh, in the first season of the show. Uh, a lot of you listening to this, you probably have already encountered me some, and I'll I'll tell you a little bit about my background here in a minute. But first, I want to bring on my good friend, Randy, and have him share a little bit about himself. Randy, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what God does through our brand new podcast. Sean, I'm even more excited because I have been wanting to uh, spend more time with you, as I'm sure many of your viewers and listeners have been wanting to hear more from you personally. And so this gives me an opportunity really to engage with you on a different level. And, you know, my background is primarily in the corporate and teaching world. And also I've been a, a journalist. I've written many, many articles. Uh, but in the corporate world, I have been uh, on the healthcare industry side, working for Johnson & Johnson, uh, working in, for pharmaceutical companies, uh, directing clinical teams, and uh, all kinds of things in the space of corporate operations director and a CEO of a biotech company. So that was the business side. And then there was the writing side. At the same time, I was writing articles. Some of them got published in, in uh, publications such as the Wall Street Journal and Forbes magazine. Just um, that's been a love of my life. So I had written numerous uh, business books, books on leadership, taught leadership, um, certified in umpteen courses, developed courses, uh, also independently started two uh, human development firms. And then uh, something uh, struck me, which is how we got connected. And that was, uh, I had experienced uh, what are called a near-death experience. I, I like to call mine an afterlife experience because my heart had stopped uh, for a period of time. And I was in the hospital, uh, of course, during this time. I uh, won't get into the details now, but I uh, was led to write a book called Dying to Meet Jesus. And then I encountered num a number of people who approached me who had read the book and said, I really want to hear more about your experience in heaven. Tell me your insights and all of that. Well, I had reserved uh, you know, much of that before writing a book uh, that's coming out uh, in the future called Revelations from Heaven which is the full disclosure of my experience uh, in heaven. I'd been reticent uh, to share at all uh, for reasons that uh, relate to my having been a skeptic before I experienced my own afterlife uh, experience. So that is kind of my background. So you take the just of what I've done in terms of the corporate world and uh, journalism, and then now I'm into this different space now of talking about heaven, which is... Uh, a relatively new arena for me, but I look forward to engaging with our guests with you, Sean, again, and um, couldn't be more happy to be with you and your audience. Well, and uh, as Randy said, he and I actually, I don't know if you, you kind of implied it, so I'll fill out the story a little bit more. So Randy and I met uh, through the course of getting ready to release his book, Dying to Meet Jesus. Um, I was actually the marketing manager for Chosen Books at the time when that book was acquired and Randy was writing it. Uh, and then at the time it came out, I actually had moved on to Destiny Image, uh, took a different position over there. Fortunately, Randy and I got connected for my podcast so we could do an interview and have a conversation uh, about the book. And that interview that Randy and I did was the first interview I think I've ever had that went viral uh, to the level that it did across my channels, Randy's channels, Destiny Image's channels. Uh, I haven't counted recently, but in terms of the that main interview and then the uh, iteration, some of the clips and some of the other pieces of media that we produce from it, um, it it's reached over a million people, uh, which was just crazy. I've never had anything go uh, quite that viral or crazy, but that gives you a little bit of context for how Randy and I got to know each other. Um, for those of you that are coming to the show because, hey, you're friends with Randy and you, you wanted to hear more about him, uh, a little bit of context for me. Um, I got 10 kids. I'm one of the few people I know that has that many kids, so kids ranging from uh, almost two years old to 22. So uh, it's never dull around my house. Uh, professionally, uh, my background, I spent over a decade in the tech and software space up in the Minneapolis area. Uh, loved working in that space, but I uh, had always had a sense of a call to publishing. I 
uh, cut my teeth in uh, the Christian bookstore space in college. Uh, it's where I met my wife, so that's probably why I like Christian bookstores so much. Uh, but I'd always thought I would go into publishing at some point. And so in my mid-30s, uh, I jumped ship from my tech career and uh, went into Christian publishing. And I've worked for, gosh, this is my third major uh, trade publisher that I've worked with. I currently work for uh, Nori Media Group, primarily on the Destiny Image team, uh, and a little bit with the Harrison House team as well. And then I help to oversee the Destiny Image Podcast Network, which my main show, The Sean Tabbit Show, is a part of. Uh, our brand new podcast, the Two, Two Christian Dudes podcast, is going to be uh, a part of. And I think for me, what I'm excited about is the majority of the content I've done has been me interviewing other people, having conversations. Um, I've done more collaborative content in the past two years after moving uh, over to Destiny Image, and I've had so much fun with that. Uh, there's just a different dynamic of the conversation when you bring a few more people into the mix. And so just Randy and I connected so well uh, through the last two years. I'm excited to see what we're able to uh, bring out of a guest. Uh, I feel like we really balance each other. I th um, Randy, with his journalism background, especially in me, I'm always, because part of my job is acquiring books, I have different things I want to draw out of people in terms of helping them tell their story. I think we'll bring out very interesting elements that are maybe a little bit out of the box. Uh, than what you're probably going to see on some of the other interview podcasts. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops uh, as we're putting together our first season. Uh, season one, we are going to look at near-death experiences. Uh, we're thinking of 12 episodes per season, uh, and we'll release two, two actual episodes per week. So there'll be kind of a part one, part two, part A, part B, however you want to uh, distinguish those. So the first part will be Randy and me interviewing sometimes authors will be somebody who will have a book uh, talking about their near death experience. We may bring on other guests who don't actually have any books or products yet. We'll see uh, as we fill out the rest of the scheduling. And then part two or part B, whatever we're going to call it, uh, will be Randy and me wrestling with it. Is this biblical? Where do we find support for this in the Bible? How does this relate to other people's near death experiences? Uh, the guests shared this in the interview, or they talked about that in the book. And Maybe I'll like something and Randy say, hey, wait, that made me super uncomfortable and, and vice versa. So uh, we, we want to have an interview component and also a discussion component. And it'll be interesting to see uh, what comes together with that. Uh, Randy, we'd love to hear some of your thoughts about what the show is going to look like. Who are some of the guests we're going to be bringing on for the first few episodes? Yeah, we're going to kick off with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Long, who is the the largest uh, NDE uh, academy or organization, you might say, in the world. So Dr. Jeffrey Long has been in this space researching. He didn't have his own experience, but he's a physician who was fascinated by this topic. And so he has researched uh, tens of thousands of stories and we'll, we'll learn how common actually the NDE experience is, unlike what uh, you or I prior to my own experience with this uh, may have, may have uh, understood it to be. So uh, Dr. Jeffrey Long will kick it off, then we'll have uh, Dean Braxton. And Dean has been on CBN and the Sid Roth uh, show and numerous others uh, talking about his experience. He was actually clinically dead for nine, about approximately 90 minutes. And you'll learn uh, how that is uh, physically, uh, mentally, uh, almost, well, it should be impossible. But he survived that, had an experience in heaven, and We'll get a, a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to talk with Dean. Dean is a friend of mine as well. We became friends after sharing our own stories. So we'll have a number of other guests in this field who have authored books, some of uh, whom have not, some of whom are in the academic realm. Uh, we'll experience uh, people who can talk about uh, heaven and their experiences uh, from a different, uh, a different perspective. You know, that's one of the things that we'll investigate, and that is uh, why are NDE or afterlife experiences so varied? Shouldn't there be a consistent theme when one has this type of experience? And yet we'll find, uh, for example, from one guest, uh, Howard Storm, that his was um, while being an agnostic. So his experience was far different than, let's say, mine or or the others uh, that I've, uh, like Dean, that I've mentioned. Uh, and his experience was more what I would call extraterrestrial. So it's kind of fascinating to, I think, to, to most of us to learn 
what he experienced prior to knowing Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And then we might even have some guests who will be joining us who don't uh, subscribe to the Judeo-Christian belief. And as Sean mentioned to you, uh, we'll be having a dialogue after these interviews and kind of our takeaway as to what we heard and what we uh, gained from that. So we'll be challenging some of our own perspectives, not just on uh, near-death experiences themselves, but also how does God fit in the con context of things that we don't really understand? And if we don't understand them fully, does that mean that we have a propensity to negate them or maybe uh, to kind of put them in the back shelf and look through uh, the eye of skepticism uh, on those topics? So that's why we'll be taking on some, some uh, subjects that may be uh, off limits in some shows. And the great thing about working with you, Sean, is that you have this uh, very learned and very wise way of kind of pointedly drawing out one of the most, most salient, most relevant uh, points from a conversation or a topic and uh, that I might miss. Uh, so uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why I am uh, over the top excited about this, this podcast. Well, I think Randy will definitely sharpen each other as we work together on this show. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that will come out, especially in season one, where we're talking about afterlife experiences, is that uh, people process their experiences through their worldview and, and not just in their day to day. But if they have uh, a, a crazy, unexplainable, supernatural experience, they have a they have to try to fit that through some sort of a lens and wrestle with it. And so I'm excited to bring on guests who have some varied perspectives. I'm, I'm hoping we can find some guests that are maybe of uh, also kind of different denominational backgrounds just to you know, uh, what would a Catholic have to say about a near-death experience versus somebody who grew up more mainline evangelical? Because um, our theology, our Bible knowledge, you know, everything we've been taught growing up, uh, that's there's a lens there that it impacts how we understand the world and how we understand uh, a supernatural experience as well. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit too about other, other seasons that we might do. Randy and I have been throwing around uh, a number of different ideas. Uh, one of the ones I'm super excited about is doing uh, maybe either season two or season three focused on uh, deliverance, uh, exorcisms, demons, that sort of a thing. People always have uh, lots of crazy questions about that. Um, I could see us potentially doing something uh, about heaven and more about heaven encounters, heaven experiences, uh, maybe to go some of the places we're not able to go as this first season focuses on these near death experiences or afterlife experiences. Uh, Randy, what were some of the other ideas that that you had that we've been Throwing around. Yeah. Well, I'm intrigued by the um, uh, angels and demons. And uh, we have some people uh, in that space that will be talking to us about uh, delving into that, that realm. Uh, my friend Marie Chapian actually wrote a New York Times best selling book uh, about this subject. And I know, Sean, that you've interviewed uh, a number of people who have done this. And Personally, I was invited by a pastor of a church. <laughs> I, I was involved with the church, and the pastor said, hey, would you join us in the deliverance ministry? And I'm like, whoa, why, why did you choose me? And I think he thought, because I had this uh, supernatural experience, this uh, afterlife experience, that maybe I could delve into that as well. Why not go for it? You know, why not uh, experience that? So you know, when we, when we delve into these subjects that um, are in the, let's say, the supernatural, uh, that really leads to a whole different realm of things that are unseen or even unheard in some, uh, some respects. We want to keep it very uh, biblically based in terms of our own conversation and context of how we fit this in. So the truth of Jesus Christ is expressed and each of these uh, each of these expressions, but we're not afraid, Sean, as as you and I have talked about, to challenge some of those views, both in our challenging others, perhaps, and how they might express uh, a subject. You know, uh, we talked about uh, Sean, you and I, on this show, that uh, we might delve into some areas that uh, would be considered off limits uh, within a Christian podcast. That is some of those that we haven't tackled yet, whether they be 
something in a space of a, a spiritual uh, kind of uh, universalism, if you will, uh, those different uh, vantage points that people commonly have, and how can we fit those perhaps in the context of what we have not only learned, but what we believe in terms of, uh, in terms of those kinds of challenging uh, subjects. So I think we're going to really bring in, uh, Sean, you and I, some subject matters in the supernatural realm, but also uh, from the, su the uh, different uh, takes from different religions, but also kind of distill it down to the Christian context of how we can address some of these matters. Who knows? We may even take on uh, politics in this uh, in this podcast, and and um, you know there are two subjects that uh, people say you can never have it at a dinner conversation. One is religion, so we've taken that on, um, and the second one is politics. So maybe we'll take that on too, and maybe no one will uh, invite us to uh, dinner <laughs> after after they've watched this podcast. <laughs> well, Randy, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm hopeful that our dinner conversations will be even better uh, after we wrestle with these hard topics. Uh, I definitely do have that vision uh, to steal popular phrase, phraseology uh, as of late, uh, that this will be a safe space for uh, discussion. In, and I've learned through the years, interviewing you know uh, authors and, and uh, guests who believe really pretty much lock, stock, and barrel exactly how I do. And I've interviewed other authors and people who couldn't be more opposed to my worldview. And I find it's in talking to those people who have different beliefs, uh, different backgrounds than me, that I'm sharpened and I'm, I'm forced to wrestle with what I believe. Those are some of the people who, yes, they challenge you, but they ask such good questions um, as they're trying to maybe wrestle with what comes up, comes up in a dialogue because they, they just haven't drunk the same, same Kool-Aid you have, so to speak. And so they, they would ask you things that uh, as people who don't know any better, um, they just ask fantastic questions. So I'm, I'm excited to dialogue with people who uh, are outside of, as, as I say, the Christian bubble that I work within, um, and it really grows me in my faith. And honestly, I can say, as I've I meet have met people from all over the world, you know, from all different walks of life with what I do, uh, some of those people who are outside of my space have become some of my best friends uh, that I am in relationship with constantly behind the scenes. So uh, I'm I'm indeed excited that God's going to do some fun things. Uh, we'll be able to introduce you to a bunch of new people, people, a lot of them who, you know, some of them Randy and I will not have ever met before until we uh, record the, the episodes for the show. Uh, Randy, in the meantime, though, if people want to connect with you, find out more about you before we get this show launched, uh, where do we discover you on the web? I can be discovered uh, at randyk.org, which is... Um... Actually, a, a ministry site that was started after I uh, delved into uh, delved into what turned out to be a ministry uh, from from my professional uh, life, and uh, you know I was a to your point, uh, Sean. I was a for, I'm a former agnostic, so much of what I will be kind of looking at through my vantage is through um, a, kind of an analytical or skeptical or evaluative mindset. Uh, and so having you know, trained a number of people on different subject matters in human development, I kind of look through that paradigm and evaluating, you know, how does this fit into a common uh, narrative in, hum in terms of human behavior, in terms of my Christian faith, in terms of looking at uh, things in a way that uh, can come to come resolution. And so uh, isn't it ironic that uh, uh, God would uh, take somebody like uh, a skeptic, both a former agnostic and a, an NDE skeptic? And by the way, I don't, say this, um, I don't say this proudly at all. I used to make fun of those who had NDE experiences. Uh, that shows you how uh, dramatically I've changed, but isn't it, uh, isn't it just like God? To, uh, tap, to tap into people who, who uh, you would never think, um, you know, whether it be a Paul who persecuted Christians or, you know, whether it be a Peter who was a denier uh, to go out to, uh, to the Jews, uh, just to pick somebody or a David who was a frail uh, young man uh, who would, would not have been chosen other than uh, by by, this, by God himself through Samuel's uh, prophetic uh, utterance. So that, those are the, uh, 
th those are the things that we'll be uh, talking about and, and sharing uh, on here. And, and I share some of that on the site. Well, uh, that's one of the things I'm really excited about. I, I love that Randy's going to bring a very different perspective for me, just based on his background and his experiences. Uh, for myself, I grew up Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, married a Baptist girl. Um, so very reformed, very conservative circles. Uh, and then I always say, because God has a sense of humor, he made me a, the publicist and eventually marketing manager over a charismatic brand. And so, uh, you know, I've, I, I have some varied perspectives just based on the different denominations I've been a part of. Uh, the church space that I uh, worship in and do my professional life in is far different than where, how I came up. Um, Ten years ago, I would have said uh, all the spirit-empowered charismatic stuff is awful and evil and wrong. And now, uh, I, you know, I jumped fully into the aquarium, and this is the space I do life uh, in now all the time. So uh, I feel like we'll be able to really bring some different perspectives uh, to the various conversations we're having. Uh, in terms of discovering me, you can head on over to SeanTabbitt.com. Uh, you can contact me there. Uh, you can find out more about my podcast, The Sean Tabbitt Show there. And yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to to collaborate and do something fun and different with Randy. I just feel like we're going to bring a conversation that needs to be had around so many issues that uh, a lot, like as Randy said, a lot of people won't touch uh, with a 10-foot pole. I'm also excited to see what will happen uh, I realize the conversations will shift from guest to guest, but I feel like once we get to the end of a season, uh, the quality of the discussion, I wonder, Randy, if God's going to challenge you and me as we process what we encounter with each guest and have an ongoing dialogue, if maybe some of our views may may shift a little bit or we'll understand things maybe in a way that we just couldn't see without having these 12 conversations. Absolutely, Sean. You know, I guess uh, if you were to kind of summarize the goal of this show, it would be to draw uh, viewers, participants, I like to call you who are viewing this, uh, to a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. I know that sounds cliche, but let me just extrapolate in, on that a little bit. That is, if we can engage each other in a conversation that ushers in the presence of God, such that through, through, you know, whether it be through the channels of, this, uh, of the cameras or the laptops uh, or the cell phones uh, through which we look, if there, is, if there is an admittance of God's presence to us personally through what we do, such that we feel like we're in the presence, in the fullness of, of, uh, of God Almighty, Jesus Christ, Wow, wow, what would that what would that be like? And I believe in my heart of hearts that um, that God's going to do that. In fact, I would go beyond that. I would I would say that I am sure of it that God will do that because having having met uh, Jesus face to face, one thing I can share uh, from the get-go is that he wants to be with us 24-7. Uh, the problem is that we don't want to be with him, uh, you know, not only 24-7, but maybe not even an hour in a day. And that's the, the challenge for us, living in this, this just hurried life with all of the impediments and all of the responsibilities that we have. So getting still and allowing God to to be with us and to consume us with his presence. Wow, if that can happen through this, Sean, and what we're talking about and expressing uh, with one another, uh, wouldn't that be special? If uh, we can be sitting there and then all, and, and then through that process, we're, 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 we're having an experience maybe that we've never had before, or maybe we've had it before, but it's been occasional. And now we can Im imbue that experience uh, so that it not only is during the show or after the show, but continues with us, um, you know, from that point forward. Wow, that would, that would truly be special, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, my heart definitely connects with what Randy just shared. And, you know, my hope with this show is that it's not only going to draw in um, Christian viewers and listeners, people who maybe already follow the ministry I do and Randy does. Obviously, we have people who 
comment, watch, and interact with us on what we've done already. And we definitely want this show to be for those people. Uh, my, my broader hope is that just given some of the topics we're going to be talking about, they have very broad appeal outside of the church. And so my hope is that we're going to draw in uh, folks from all, all different walks of faith, life, and experience. Maybe you grew up in church and you've fallen away. Maybe you've never darkened the door of a church, but uh, you've had encounters or experiences where you're just trying to sort things out or you're trying to find answers. So um, I am confident we'll be able to give you a, a biblical perspective uh, on some of these things. Um, and we really do want to give people who interact with us on the show every opportunity to encounter the Lord Jesus um, and, and really to have the opportunity to have him change your life, just like he's changed Randy's life, just like he's changed my life. And so that that's our heart. That's our desire for the show. Uh, the show will be launching at the end of May 2021 or early June thereabouts. So um, it'll be fully available wherever great podcasts are downloaded. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, the video content will be on my YouTube channel, Randy's YouTube channel, Destiny Images YouTube channel. So uh, we'll make it widely available in all the places you would expect to be able to uh, interact with the podcast. And so thanks for taking the time to get to the end of this trailer. We went a little beyond I think what the average episode zero trailer should be, but um, we really just wanted to give you kind of that full flavor, full feel uh, of what you'll be able to expect in the show. And Randy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have the parting word, man. However you want to close us off, finish up our episode zero. God loves you so much. Um, just earlier, Sean and I were exchanging that uh, about a woman who was healed and she broke down and she said, you know, I, God's not angry with me. He loves me. And um, it just dawned on me that so many feel uh, distance from the Lord because they feel that he's angry at them. And I want to tell you, um, having met him, that, that he not only is not angry with you, um, that he is the one that loves you most and is closer to you um, than you can possibly imagine. And um, if that doesn't blow your mind, uh, stay tuned because we're going to try as we uh, continue with this podcast. Thanks for joining us. God bless. Amen. I, that deserves amen. Thank you, Randy. And we're looking forward to seeing you all soon. Uh, Two Christian Dudes podcast. It's going to be amazing. Uh, it, it, it may even change your life. We hope that it's going to make a big impact on you. We'll see you soon.